my pre-op room. Gonna get changed into this awesome fit. Very nervous. I didn't sleep at all. I feel awful, but hopefully everything's fine. We'll see you on the other side. Say hi. No, you have to do you have to do landscape. Okay. <laughs> So to give you guys context on how I ended up here, I'm going to try to make this long story short. This saga goes all the way back to July of 2023. I randomly started feeling some pain at the bottom of my right foot, around the toe area, like the ball of my foot. I just thought it was a sprain, maybe some sort of soreness that I was feeling from persistent rock climbing and MMA training that I was doing at the time. However, after weeks and weeks, it did not get better, it just kept getting worse. So I decided to tell my physical therapist. He assured me that it was just a sprain and it'll get better in a month or two. So we did a couple of uh, physical therapy exercises. He did some deep tissue massages around that area. Unfortunately, it just didn't get better month after month after month. Fast forward to January 2024 and I'm accepted into the stunt school program and although I'm very excited I'm a little concerned because the pain that I had been feeling has been stopping me from running, from rock climbing, from doing all of these physical activities that come with being a stunt person. I knew that if I wanted to impress I had to show up prepared and in shape but this foot was holding me back so I just decided to get a second opinion and finally get this thing sorted. After some new x-rays they found that my foot had been fractured this entire time. For the last seven months I had been doing all of these crazy things, doing flips, rock climbing, MMA training, working 40 hours a week, sometimes 70 hours a week, and my foot was broken the entire time. Now the specific fracture was a right fibular sesamoid fracture. The sesamoid bones, which I had not heard of before this, are these like little bones that are right underneath the ball of your foot, kind of around where like the joint of your big toe is. Through this injury, I had learned a lot about the foot and the muscles and the joints and everything, just because I kept doing research on what was wrong with me and what were the options. Unfortunately, the only option for me, because it had been so long, was surgery. I had to get that little bone removed from my foot. It ended up being a very quick surgery and there was no complications and I was sent home on the same day. It's criminal not to do landscape. Okay, say hi. Hey, what's up guys? It's <laughs> here. And they just cut my foot open. Oh, it's covered. That's unfortunate. Well, I don't want to see your nasty cut open foot, so. It's wrapped up. Oh, I guess. I guess. Sierra is super cool and she came to pick me up. Aww. And I love her very much. I love you too. Uh, I feel great. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> but I don't, I'm not in any pain. Can't wait to get out of this bitch and recover. Yeah. Y'all ain't ready for when I come back. Y'all ain't ready. The strongest I've ever been. You want to have a closing statement? Um, don't give up on your dreams because uh, because the recovery process was very difficult for me. I would not have been able to make it past those first couple of days if it wasn't for my beautiful girlfriend Sierra, who took such good care of me. She even helped me go to the bathroom. She brought me meals. She stayed with me for those first couple of days. And I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for her, I'd be in such rough shape right now. Apart from the fact that she tried to drown me. Josh? <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you needed more. Are you okay? He's trying to drown me. I'm sorry, I thought you needed more. That was me saying stop and you kept- I thought you weren't no. getting any and it was tasting bad in your no. mouth. I'm <laughs> sorry. Don't worry guys, he's taking really good care of me. He just almost drowned me that time. This is a plead for help. Hey, what's up guys? It's day two. This is my foot. Uh, it hurts a lot. I haven't been able to poop yet, but I feel it. Huh? I can poop, so I will be able to poop. These first couple of days consisted of me just laying in bed, reading books, sometimes watching a movie or a show, but for the most part it was just nothing. And that started to get very, very depressing really quick. I just couldn't walk anymore. And you kind of take that for granted, your ability to walk when you've had it your whole life. So not having it for a few weeks really, really got me down. So I had to set myself a goal. I had to give myself something to look forward to. So I decided that I was going to be running 
the Bell and Run, which is a 10K race in June. That gave me about three, three and a half months to recover and train. And I set myself the goal to run it in under an hour, which for most people doesn't sound like a lot, but I was never a big runner. I have run the Bell and Race in the past, like years and years ago. And I remember getting well over an hour. I mean, I was just a kid. But for me, that goal was very ambitious. All I had to do from this point on was, was recover and, and when I could start training. I just made some huge progress. I actually moved my foot. Yeah. Oh, I'm making progress. I'm losing track of days because they all blend together. I'm just either laying in bed or laying in the on the couch downstairs, and the days just... I, I would have thought that they would have gone by so slow, but days just fly by, man. It's kind of depressing because I'm not getting better, and... Like, I am getting better, but, like, I'm not as fast as I thought I'd be getting better. I just want to be up and walking around, man. Like, it's the biggest thing. It's just very demoralizing that I won't be able to walk for another at least another week and a half, if that. And that walking is going to be on my heel with a boot, looking really goofy. Recovery is going to be long. It's going to be difficult. I got to keep at it, man. I got to keep trusting that it was the right decision, that it's only going to get better from here. And I'm going to be able to reach uh, a different peak in my athletic ability when I'm back fully. This sucks. This absolutely sucks. Surgery sucks. We're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. See you on the flip side. Hey, what's up guys, it's Eager XI. I'm going to try to drive. It is day 14. I need to start working. I have already gone to work a couple days, uh, but people have dropped me off and I hate having to depend on people to take me and to pick me up. It's just a lot of, a lot of just like guilt that I feel and um, I hate it. I hate that so much. So we're gonna try to drive. We're gonna do a little drive around the block. Uh, but I'm really feeling any pain, and I think I'm going to be able to drive. So we're going to try it. Um, let's see what happens. So drive was successful. Went around the block. I felt pretty comfortable. It is going to take some getting used to. I have to put a lot more pressure down on my foot. Uh, but I think we're back driving, which is... It feels great. It's like a feeling of freedom that I haven't had in two weeks. Because I've just been cooped up, and whenever I go, someone has to be driving me around. So I think we have regained the ability to freaking drive. Let's go. Hey, what's up, guys? It's been a while since I did an update. We are at day 16 or 17, one of those two. I got the sutures out today, and I'm currently icing it and elevating just because it was hurting a bit. I drove to my haircut appointment, so your boy got a fresh cut right now. This is my new shoe. Because of this, like, the thickness and just the weirdness of it, I'm not sure how much pressure I'm supposed to be applying. And it's a little dangerous. So still, so I don't want to be driving super far. The stitches coming out. It was fine until like the last two really freaking hurt. He must have put them in like really deep. So now I'm walking around without a big bandage, uh, which is making things a little worse. At least with the bandage, it was lifting my foot off the floor a little bit and it was keeping me from putting weight down right on the incision. I'm still walking on my heel, but it's kind of hard to keep my whole foot up off the, the shoe. Sometimes I'll make contact with that part and it hurts a little bit. So I'm feeling like a little bit of a new pain. I've been back at work and this kind of feels like I'm regressing a little bit because I might have to take some t a little bit more time off. But unfortunately, my job does not offer any benefits of any kind. That includes paid sick leave. So I basically had no income for those first couple of weeks and I needed I needed money. So I... Went back to work. Whether or not that was a good idea, um, I'm not sure, but I just I had to get back in there. I had bills to pay. It sucked some days. Uh, at least for the first couple of days, I was able to just sit and do some office work. But right away, it was very obvious that I was needed in the more labor-intensive areas of the job. So I had to just suck it up and keep working. Hey, y'all. Just got done with the gym. Um, first time physically in the gym. I did do a bit of a workout on Monday. Didn't get in, didn't get pumped. I was just doing some pull-ups on the pull-up bars. I've been recently like instead of listening to music while I work out, uh, I've been listening to like motivational speeches, um, and it's definitely helped me a lot. I feel like I get a lot more pumped up during the workouts, and it makes me uh, push more. And it's good to have that sort of like positive energy 
um, those positive speeches like in your head because you remember them and um, you get a lot of good quotes from it. There was one quote that really hit me and kind of made me like emotional during my workout, which is weird. I'm over here like I was doing this workout and then I start to almost feel like crying. I, d I did get a couple of like tears, I think. My eyes are watering, but it mixed in with the sweat, so you, I, no one can tell. But um, basically, what was said, I don't remember the exact quote, but basically, um, he said, like, what if this challenge that was thrown at you was for a purpose? What if you needed this as a wake up call to work harder? Um, when this injury first happened to me, I was like, damn, like, really? Like, why me right now? Like, I, I want to keep, you know, working out and getting better. Like, this is such a, like, an inconvenience. But what if it was something that I needed to push harder? You know? So it kind of made me look at my whole situation in a different way. I'll keep pushing along and um, hopefully uh, with this newfound motivation, I can uh, stay positive. Because there are moments, even though, like I said, I am a positive person, there are moments when I look back and I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, I really got to deal with this right now. That's basically all I had to say. Finally, after three weeks of a tough recovery, I regained the ability to walk. It is very hard for me to describe how I felt in that moment. I felt very grateful, and I kept thinking to myself, I'm never going to take my ab my simple ability to walk for granted ever again. I was so happy. Soon after, I started going to physical therapy, and after a few weeks, I got the all clear to start running. I just ran my first mile back since the surgery. It is April 30th. Uh, 10 weeks about out from the surgery um, I wasn't supposed to run today I was actually supposed to run tomorrow for the first time but I'm here at the gym and I'm listening to these motivational speeches as I'm doing my uh, physical therapy exercises and suddenly I just get the motivation to just just run I see the treadmill like the, the speech is just hitting different and I get on that treadmill and I say fuck it we're running today and um, right away, right instantly, bro, I started feeling the cramps. You know those cramps you get when you, like after you like eat and you run a bit after? I, I just, for some reason I get those cramps so easily. Like there could be like two hours in between me eating and running and I still get those cramps, which is absolutely sucks. But I, I dealt with the pain pretty well. I just said, fuck it, keep pushing through. Um, the foot felt pretty good. Um, there was a little pain at the beginning, but as I went, as like I kept running, it actually got better. Um, and it wasn't that hard, honestly. That one mile, like the fact that I did it on uh, almost under eight minutes, I think I got exactly eight minutes. Um, I feel good. I feel really good, and that's the pace I'm going for for the the, the 10k. And uh, the, what is that? A month now? Whew. June 8th is my 10k. I think I'll be ready. I think I'll be ready. It's just as long as I train smart, I don't I don't hurt myself in the process, and I think. Come June 8th, uh, I'll be at the finish line and I'll would have met my goal of completing it in under an hour. So let's go. Positive stuff. We're feeling good. <sighs> Just keep going. Just keep going. Day two of training marathon. I have a, a running partner this time. Let's go. Come on. We gotta get six miles in today. Let's go! She's fast! <laughs> Holy shit! Just completed two mile run, day two of training for the 10k. Pretty good pace, under eight minute mile average for both of those miles. So, Oh, I'm so tired. I'm not running for almost a year. Really, uh, it makes it difficult. Uh, fuck, I can't believe I have to get, I have to do that times, th math, times three, right? Wait, what is, no, yeah, because six, sorry, math, I have to get up to 6.2 miles in less than a month. Wow, that was hard. Unfortunately, after this run, I started feeling this really painful joint pain around my big toe and it was it was just so awful. I felt so discouraged and because I had already been dealing with this for a year, I just chose to stop running. I didn't want to risk further injury. I was just terrified that I was going to regress all the progress that I had made up until that point. I was so depressed and just upset and I was even considering dropping out of the race. I was so upset that I didn't even film an update or anything like that. I was just 
so mad and I was so close to just giving up on this entire goal. So I took a couple days to rest. I, I went to see my doctor and he told me that it was okay that I could run through the pain. I was a little bit skeptical. I didn't want to hurt myself anymore, but I decided, you know what? Fuck it. Go big or go home. So I started training again. We are, I believe, two weeks away from race day. I have had very little time to train because of this injury. Um, when I first started, I was doing really good. The pain was, I was managing the pain pretty well, and suddenly, just I don't know where the joint in my big toe just was giving me so much problems. And I started just to ease off of it. I said, let me just do cardio on the bike and work on that. Um, I went to the doctor. He said that I could train through the pain, which I'm a little apprehensive to do because I've been dealing with this injury for so long. It's, it's been a year almost at this point, and it would suck. Like, obviously nothing's broken because we, we did an x-ray and nothing's broken, and the bone that was broken has been removed. So like, obviously it's not, just, it's not like I'm gonna break it or damage it in any way. I'm just worried to do like a different kind of damage, maybe some sort of joint damage or something like that. Um, so I've kind of been a little scared to train my running specifically. Um, I did like a short cardio exercise on Thursday I believe, yeah on Thursday, and that included a bit of running and it did kind of hurt a little bit but for the most part I felt fine. So we're going to just try to do like an easy 5k today. Um, I haven't run 5k since before the injury. Um, we're gonna go for a really light pace. You know, my target for the 10K is to run it under an hour. And I know for some of you guys, it's gonna be like, it might seem like it's super easy, but this is coming from someone who had surgery three months ago on the bottom of their foot. So for me to get that 10K under an hour is gonna be an absolute achievement for me, uh, especially considering the fact that I haven't run more than three miles yet. And <laughs> we're two weeks out. So I'm gonna aim for that like nine minute um, per mile pace, so a really easy jog. Um, and yeah, hopefully it'll go well. Let's get it. Let's get this money. Let's fucking go. That was so hard. Oh my God. Jesus. 5K in the bank. Oh. I have to do double that on race day. I have to do double that in two weeks. Whew. To be fair, I went like 40 seconds faster than I needed to per mile, so I could definitely slow down a little bit on race day, and I'm sure if I am behind, the adrenaline will help me in that last mile to pick up the, the pace. Um, wow, uh, I have a lot of pain in my right ankle, the toe is a little bit flared up, uh, but overall, there is this great run, and there is this weird, uh, weird moment where my pain was at the worst it was the whole run and I don't know if I'm crazy but I started smiling I was I was just soaking it up pain I don't really know how to explain it I don't want to be all dramatic and be like pain is beautiful but in that moment I was grateful that I you know and mentally strong the way I am and that I was able to push myself the way that I was and uh, even though I was feeling a lot of pain I was smiling and ultimately I completed my goal so oh very happy with that we have two weeks I'm gonna build off of that and hopefully race day I won't even break a sweat wow just got done with four and a half mile run with my boy Cody shout out to him follow him on Instagram Cody's running he is a crazy runner he runs marathons all the time bro had just done a marathon yesterday and ran this four and a half mile run with me this morning crazy um, but definitely helps to run with someone who's uh, experienced uh, and knows what they're doing he gave me a lot of good advice and yeah it was a really good run overall most I've ever run since the surgery and I actually felt pretty comfortable. It's crazy how running with someone kind of distracts you from like the pain you feel. We were like talking the whole time. Uh, we ran at the perfect pace that I want for the 10K and I feel more 
more confident about actually being able to uh, not only complete the race but actually achieve my goal of getting it in under an hour. So it is Monday. The race is on Saturday. Uh, I have been dealing with a bit of soreness, so I'm gonna try to take it easy for the rest of the week. And uh, I think the next time I do like a full-on run, it's gonna be on race day. So wow, let's do it. race day I just woke up I'm a little I'm running a little late but I wanted to give an update before the actual race of how I'm feeling I didn't sleep very well I think I just felt like I was in a constant light sleep I was too uh, nervous too excited to really get any good sleep so I feel a little tired but try to do what you gotta do um, I've done the training we just gotta hope that my body is able to keep up and all I want to do is just at least get it under an hour. I don't want to push myself too hard and get hurt. Um, I just want to get the goal that I set for myself. Sorry, I literally just woke up, that's why my head looks crazy. I just want to get the goal that I set for myself. I don't want to go too much more crazy than that, unless I feel good, then maybe, but let's just take it easy and see what happens. Foot still kind of hurts a little. It hasn't been a problem in training, really, just a little bit of soreness after my runs. So we'll see how it holds up. I haven't run further than four and a half miles. So we're adding on mile, 1.7 miles onto the longest distance that I've run. Nervous, kind of, but excited. Uh, everything that I've done up until this point leads to today. So let's get this bread. Let's get it. We pulling up right now. It is raining. I don't know if you can tell, but it's completely raining. I love it though, I love the rain. When, it, when you run, it just helps you cool down. Can't wait, let's get it. It is packed, it is freaking packed. The whole dang town is here, and then some. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna be late. Too far. I'm on the eight mile pace. I'm supposed to run on nine. I know, me too. I didn't get enough time to stretch, but whatever. Really? No, this is this is my pace. If you can keep up. I can't believe she's running. Oh my. Let's go. Oh my god. How do you feel? Are you tired? Yeah, I'm exhausted already. Uh, I started too far up. I need to hang up at the 8.30 to like 9.30 people. They have pacers, which is amazing. People that pace. That's really nice. Yeah. 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 Want to get a good first mile and then just coast the rest of them. Let's get it. One more. Where's it? Oh my God. Feeling good. A little bit of a cramp in my lower abdomen, which is weird, but we'll make it through. I'm going way faster than I should be, but I'm feeling good. So I'm gonna stay at this pace. Let's go. Let's give you a little update. Ah, We're two miles. Let's go. You are the pace. You're two miles. On your killing it. <laughs> Gotta get all the footage. Gotta get it all. <laughs> Yeah! Woo! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
over 5k. I'm exhausted. Pain is temporary. Pride is forever. Let's get it. There really was just some Packer players on the side giving us high fives. I wish I got it on video, but I'm too excited. That was crazy. Pumped up to him, so. When life buries you, buries you with your bills, buries you with your relationship problems, whatever it is, I need you to dig deep and find your way out. I need you to remember your purpose, remember who you love, remember what you're doing it all for. I need you to remember you are good enough. Remember that you were born a miracle and you only have one shot at this life, one shot to give your all. One short life, one short chance to show the world how strong you are, to show everyone that you will not be defeated by life. A life greater than anything you've ever imagined is waiting for you. Just keep pushing, just keep pushing forward. Okay, so I just took shower. The soreness was really setting in, but after the shower, I feel a lot better. My God, that was nuts. He did great. He did way better than I thought he was gonna do. I was aiming for less than an hour. That is like a 940 pace. And I only trained at that pace. I did, I did run a couple miles here and there at like 830, 840. And to me, that was really difficult. One of like my latest training runs was two miles at 830. And I almost like died doing that. Like that was super tiring. Every mile that I ran today was faster than like 825. I don't know what came over me, <laughs> if it was just like the adrenaline, if it was the support of the, of the crowd. The crowd was really supportive. Yeah, it was amazing. There was just, I don't know, the music and just the, the camaraderie between runners. Like people would like cheer you on, like, you got this, keep going. And I ended up running, yeah, at 825 pace and running the whole race at like what? I think it's at, oh, Strava says 540 something or 50, uh, 51 minutes 40 something. And then the official Bellin thing says 52 minutes, which whatever it is, crushed, absolutely crushed what my goal was. Um, and yeah. Because I was waiting at the finish line. I didn't expect him for another 10 minutes or so. And there he is. And I'm like, <laughs> Glad you got that, that video. Yeah. I was so excited. I just couldn't believe like I was like, I was running at this pace the whole time because there was pacers next to me and I knew that I was running faster than I should, should have been. But I felt good. I was like, I think I can hold this pace. Like, it, it hurts. There was a lot of pain. But someone had a sign, and I and I said it in during one of the times I like pulled out the camera to film myself. There was a sign. That someone said it said, um, "Pain is temporary, pride is forever." So I just kept thinking that over and over in my head, and just pushing for it, and how happy I would be if I absolutely smashed my goal, and I did. Crushed it. So we're here three and a half month, three and a half months after surgery crushed a 10k in 51 minutes now it's time for the marathon it's so, now it's so, now it's time for down. the marathon that that's what i was i don't know if i should do a half or a full full send it we'll see but that yeah that's the next uh that's the next goal in this 100 percent series is it's a marathon um it's gonna be crazy i hate i just need to, need to preface this i hate running i actually hate it like the actual act of doing it i hate it so much it's painful um, but the feeling you get of like accomplishing the goal you set off for yourself, very few things rival that amazing feeling you get from that. So that's why I do it. <laughs> and also, you know, to stay fit because you have to be fit as a stunt person. So it's a good, good medium to use to stay fit. But I hate it. But I'm gonna keep doing it, and I'm gonna run a marathon. It's gonna run a marathon. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching this. Hopefully, well-made video. If I if I actually take time to edit it properly, and um, yeah, we'll see ya in the next one. Why did you do that? <coughs>
Don't give up on your dreams because uh, because 